Record taking and tray selection with a dent kiss system. We will now review the initial records you will take and how to select the appropriately sized dent kit tray for your impression. In your dent kit kit, you will find upper and lower impression trays with removable pins and small, medium, large, and extra large sizes. You will find easy tracers which will be used to simplify capturing your centric relation record. You will also find the dent lip ruler. This lip ruler will allow you to measure your patient's lip drape, which provides Dentka the information needed to determine the ideal incisal display for your patient. The Dentka jaw gauge will help finalize and idealize your patient's final vertical dimension of occlusion. Other materials you will need are typical materials for standard dental procedures. Since these materials aren't anything special, it makes it easy to incorporate dent cut into your practice. The materials that you will need are high viscosity and low viscosity polyvinyl siloxane, a bite registration paste material, a slow speed handpiece and acrylic burrs, and a scalpel with a sharp blade. Now that you have all your materials out and set up, you are ready to start your first Dentka visit. We will start with a preliminary jaw relation record. As with traditional dentures, we need to establish our vertical dimension of occlusion. Traditionally, any number of methods have been used to measure the vertical dimension of occlusion, or VDO, for a new set of dentures, most commonly placing a dot on the chin and a dot on the nose, and a tongue depressor to record this measurement. The dent jaw gauge helps make this recording a little bit simpler and cleaner with easy to read numbers while you establish your patient's VDO. If your patient has current dentures with an acceptable vertical height, as in this patient's case, these dentures can be utilized as a guide for your new dentures. To capture VDO, have the patient place their current dentures in their mouth. Rest the patient's chin gently in the chin cup and have the patient gently and lightly close into occlusion as you slowly slide the ruler towards the patient's nose. You want the bottom edge of the dent jaw ruler to only lightly touch the lower border of the patient's nose. If too much pressure is applied, you will see the patient's nose move up and down. Record the number when the ruler just touches the nose. This is your vertical dimension of occlusion. If the patient has no dentures or an incorrect vertical dimension of occlusion, you will need to first establish the patient's vertical dimension of rest, or VDR, using any standard technique, including having the patient say Emma, or by relaxing their jaw to fatigue their muscles. Subtract 1 to 5 millimeters from VDR to allow for freeway space, and that will be the VDO that you use and record to measure on your dent jaw gauge. Next, we will utilize the dent lip ruler, which as previously mentioned, helps establish the final incisal display for your denture. Identify your patient's premaxillary area on their upper ridge, where you will find the incisive papilla. There's a cup-shaped portion at the top of the dent jaw gauge that rests right in this area. Seat that gently in the premaxillary area and have the patient relax their lip. Whatever number you can read first below the patient's lip will be the patient's lip measurement. Record this number and provide it to DEDCA. This number will be inputted into their system and allow them to establish how much incisal display your patient will have. Next we will review choosing the most appropriately sized tray. When choosing a DEDCA tray, you will want an even space of about 1 to 2 millimeters all around your tray for even material distribution. This is the ideal thickness for polyvinyl siloxane to be its most accurate. If your patient has an existing denture, you can use that to gauge your appropriate tray selection. The inside of the dent tray should be roughly the same size as the patient's denture. In this case, we try the denture inside the blue and the green trays, the large and extra large trays, and you can see that both trays are significantly larger than the patient's denture. When we try the green tray in the patient's mouth anyway, it impinges on the patient's soft palate and makes the patient uncomfortable. 
Trying in a tray for dentures or for any impression should never be uncomfortable for the patient. If too large of a tray is used for any impression, it can lead to too much bulk of material resulting in inaccuracies, air bubbles, and distortion. With a dent cast system, it can also impede on achieving an accurate vertical dimension of occlusion or VDO. The thickness of impression material in the palatal area will prevent the patient from closing as much as they need to to establish the correct VDO in the next step, as you will see momentarily. A more appropriate tray for this patient is the orange medium tray, which as you can see is roughly the same size as the patient's upper denture. If we decide to try the small white tray, you can see the borders of the tray hit the tuberosities in parts of the ridge, preventing a complete tray seat. If we elected to proceed with the light body impression material, we would have a very large thickness of light body PVS around the borders, which would be unsupported by the heavy body PVS. This could lead to distortion, as well as a very thick bulk of material in the palatal area. As previously discussed, this could cause distortion as well as affecting VDO in our final prosthetics. Once you have chosen your ideal tray, you're ready to proceed with upper and lower impressions.